Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to take a look at the diabolical Sudoku that appeared in the Telegraph on Friday. Um, now these can be a bit brutal, uh, as the name suggests, but we'll, we'll see how we go. And apologies, I'm on the laptop today, so the quality of the video may be slightly down on usual, but I'm, I hope that it's still pretty clear. Um, we'll get what we need to from the video. So first thing to do is to scan around the grid and try and find things to obvious things to put in. You can see we can actually place a seven in this position down here. And what else can we do? We can make some pencil marks, lots of pencil marks. So let's start doing that. So usual pencil mark technique that we're, we're employing, which is that in any three by three block, if a number can only go in exactly two positions, then we can put pencil marks in. So you can see I'm using this 9 here. This means a 9 is either in this cell or this cell. So two positions, so I can pencil mark that. Now, uh, that's going to allow us to place a 9 here. And what else can we do? You can see now we have can place a 9 here. And any more nines possible? Not immediately. I mean, this cell here is now forced, you can immediately see, because we need to place one, two, and four uh, along these three cells. And we have a one and a two already in column one. So this is a, that's a four there. This is a one, this is a two, this is a one, and this is a two. Um, oh, look at that. We've got a nice interaction now. This one, two here and this one two in column five. So if you look at how these interact, they're forcing a one and a two into these two positions in this three by three block, um, which is quite a nice spot. Um, annoyingly, you can see also in this block and this block here, we, ha we have no ones and twos, so we can't actually tell anything much about where ones and twos go in this three by three block, except that they're in row 9. That's, that's all we know. Um, so we're going to have to think harder, I think, before we can make more progress there. We can use this 4 in the way this interacts with this, this block here uh, to make pencil marks like this. That in turn allows us to make a couple of pencil marks in the central 3x3 three three block. Um, and we can place a big five. I can see that we can place a big five here. It allows us to pencil mark fives into these two cells. Okay. Uh, oh, we can place a nine in the middle of the grid. Let's do that. Not sure it's going to help us that much, but we we'll always take a number if the puzzle is going to give us one. And now it's just pencil marks over there. Um, ditto, we can pencil mark eights into these two cells. And threes over here. Which allows us to pencil mark threes up, up here. And now we can use this 7 on this central 3x3 three three box now. We can now lock 7s into these two positions, which gives us a double on 4 and 7 here. And that means that these two cells here have to be 8 and 5. And you can see that we already have an 8 in this cell. So in fact that resolves the 8 and 5 in this block here. We can place the 8 and the 5. And that allows us to place an 8 here, oh, and here, and pencil mark some 8s down here. Uh, we can use this, this 5 here, and in fact we can actually place a big 5 now in this cell, just by simple Sudoku rules, nothing clever, nothing clever there and pencil mark the fives into these two cells here. Ah, but now we can use the interaction of this five 
and this 5. That means that actually in these two cells we have a 5 in one of them, which means we can place this 5 here. Now you can see, hopefully, if we now look at row 6 of the grid, we're missing a 3, 4 and a 7. And you can see we have a 3 here and a 3 here, so there is a hidden 3 in this position, which we might as well write in. That means this is a 3 over this side. We can pencil, uh, and oh, in fact we've already done the work. Oh, that doesn't look good, a run time error. Let's hope that hasn't completely broken the recording. That therefore has to be a 3 up there. Uh, okay, let's mark sevens into these positions. This cell here has to be a four or a seven, but we can't notate that using the method of notation we, we, we're using or we'll get confused. Ditto, this is a seven or a nine, if this is a seven or a nine, that actually does help though, because that means this must be a nine. And this must be a 7, and this must be a 9, which means that this is a 9 over here. So, almost all the progress we can using the 9s. This now has to be a 7, because if we use this 7, we can see one of these two cells is going to, in fact, this cell is going to have to be a 7, that's going to be a 7, that's going to be a 4. So far, nothing too difficult about this uh, this week. We've had harder ones. I suspect there's going to be a sting in the tail. Um, so 2, 4 and 6 to place over this side. So we can place the pencil marks that we need. Been looking more carefully already. That's a 4 there. Uh, which means we can pencil mark the 4s into these two positions. This is always a difficult point in a solve, just because you now have we now have so much information we've collected that spotting the next number can be a bit of a lottery. But I actually think I've seen it here. If we look at uh, column four here, we need to place one, two, and three in this column. You can see the interaction of this column with row three it means this has to be a one. That's the only cell that can be. Now that means that this is a one and this is a two means this must be a 3 because it's the only thing that's left. That means this is a 2. Uh, tidy up some of the pencil marks here, which we probably should do, so we don't get confused. Um, we just still have a dearth of 6s in the grid. Oh, no, look, there's a 7. We can, simple Sudoku rules. We can place a 7 over this side in this cell here. Let's do that. Tracker pad lets me, which means this is a 7, this is an 8, and this is a 6, which means this is an 8, this is an 8. Um, So it has to be a 4. It's very surprising this so far. It's not It's not really had anything. But whether the notation we're using is just very, very efficient for this puzzle, that is possible. Or whether we've been a bit lucky with the solve. But so far it's been straightforward this. Um, okay. And now... You can see here, we need 3, 5 and 6 in row 8, that's the missing numbers. If we look here, we've already got a 5 in this cell here. So we know that the 5 is either in this position or this position. Well, we 
from the work we did earlier. In fact, this will have to be a 5. Let's put that in. That means this has to be the 3. This must be 6. This has to be a 6 now. This is a 4. This is a 4. This is a 4. This is a 4. This is just really, uh, really peculiar. Um, which means that all that work we did originally when we worked out that the 1s and the 2s are in these bottom 3 cells, now we can We've proved that from the work we've done subsequently as well. So we've got one, two, six to place in column seven. Uh, means this the ones are up here in this line. And let's. Uh, I think we can. Yes, I think we can use uniqueness now to finish this off. Um, look at the one here. Now that means that we can pencil mark ones into these two positions, and that interacts now with these this one down here. So we now have an arrangement where you can see we're missing a two from this three by three block. Now, if the twos were in these two positions, the puzzle would now no longer have a unique solution because with the interaction of this one two down here, if these if this was one two as well, we could have this as a 1 and this is a 1 and this is a 2 and this is a 2 or vice versa that would be uh, there would be two ways of writing the 1s and the 2s without any way of telling which was intended to be the correct answer so we know therefore that the 2s can't appear in these two positions here therefore they're going to have to appear in this position so we know this is a good puzzle with a unique solution so we can write the two in there. Now you can see immediately that's going to, I think, resolve everything in the puzzle. I don't know if that's what the compiler intended here, but we certainly will use that fact. Um, so what do we need now? We need two and six here, which means that's got to be that way round. And that means we can write the two. Oh, more messages that worry me. One, and there's a six there. So nice and easy this week. Um, so easy, in fact, I might do the Deadly Killer from the Times and try and post that video as well at some stage. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope this is useful. Certainly, I think it's a good puzzle that shows the power of good technique. We didn't need any more than that this week. So thanks for watching. See you again next time.